for years, we have been coming to tech conferences and we've been talking about talent, talent, talent. And the question I want to raise with you for a few minutes is what if talent wants something actually very different right now? What if talent wants a new kind of power and we have an opportunity as the tech industry to reimagine what it means to be a talent first uh, kind of an industry? So I said earlier, our VC firm focuses exclusively on the future of work and we see a new movement, this movement toward a new kind of labor organizing as that opportunity. So I want you to imagine something, which is you get an email from the following address, insert your company's name here, your company name union at gmail.com. The email says the employees of your company are unionizing and in fact there's already a website and social media handles and a campaign is underway. And for some of you, you might sit there and think, well, that's interesting, but probably won't happen to me. It's kind of a curiosity to ignore. Some of you might think of it as something that you dread. And it is happening more and more, and it might happen to you and your company. In fact, if you look at what has been happening for years now in the tech industry, you can see one example after another of organized tech talent forcing companies to drop customers to resign from presidential appointments, to get more active on a social issue like climate change or Black Lives Matter and more. And it turns out that tech talent, when it's organized, is the constituency that has the most leverage to get tech companies to change. More than investors, and I can say that as one, more than the street, more in practice than government, more than customers, and of course, this is the world that we created because our industry started 50 years ago giving ownership to virtually every employee. We compete on corporate perks, at least in good times. And so what if talent wants something different now than what we've been giving them? And while many people who work in tech are economically secure, we live in a country, in an economy where many people are not, People in tech do want to see companies make change, take stances on issues that matter to them. And they've tried many ways of exercising their power and their voice. And the current company engagement strategies, where you ask in a survey what people want and give them bagels if they want bagels or some kind of new tool, are just not cutting it for many people. And talent's attitudes are changing toward labor and unions in particular. So what if the most important underrated CEO skill of the future is one that isn't even taught at most major business schools, which is how to lead an organized workforce? And so I'll just share, there are a lot of forms of, of labor organizing. This is the Google walkout from 2018. Workers come together in this case, opposing uh, uh, hidden uh, facts about company treatment around sexual harassment and wanting more disclosure. And most of the organizing in tech has looked like this. Um, in the U.S., when people say labor organizing, they often think it's only unions, but that's not the case. Um, that said, unions are happening too. I mean, you can see it at Alphabet, at Amazon, at Activision, just the letter A's. And a union is just a kind of labor organization that has some legally protected rights. Some of the unions are big and national, communication some are international, some like the Amazon Labor Union are independent, um, but the way this organizing in tech is happening is because tech is different, is different from other industries. For example, a lot of workers say the reason that they are organizing is because they love the companies where they work. They want the companies to live up to their values. Communication, but also tools that offer encryption or anonymity and some purpose built tools for labor organizing. And so what should business leaders do? And the old playbook was if this happened, you said, uh-oh, like this is going to be awful, fight it at all costs. And it's possible that there's another way. Because I think that if we're going to be an industry that says we value talent, it's very difficult for us to say we value talent and at the same time fight things talent says that talent wants to do. So, uh, <clears throat> that it can make managing easier. At some labor unions, the labor union runs healthcare benefits. That it allows companies to practice their values and make better decisions if 
you incorporate the voice of workers in the right places. And tech companies are starting to experiment. I'll share that briefly, and then I'll wrap. Glitch is a company where unionization happened. They said, well, it's going to happen anyway. It's inevitable. We might as well voluntarily agree to negotiate with the union. Tech private equity as well. Um, there's an effort underway to up broadly through money. And so hmm, I'll say what we've so far. While some of the worries are valid, yes, it is true. You know, unions can make it more difficult to change in a company. They can empower a more extreme element of your talent. And there are plenty of ways it can go wrong. Whether it goes well or not is really on you on us in what we choose to do. There's nothing inevitable about labor organizing being either good or bad for companies. There are plenty of ways it can go both ways. And we can take plenty of actions. And you look at what many tech companies have done, and you'll see plenty of don'ts in what they've done. You know, you can, um, <clears throat> uh, you know, sometimes the CEO assumes that if they just sit with the workers, they can change their mind or tell the workers what's in their best interest or do inauthentic things like show up in a coffee shop and sweep the floors if you've never done that before, listening to the lawyers. But of course, you should listen to the lawyers to an extent because you got to follow the law. And the worst thing many people are doing is just waiting and doing nothing. And we're now seeing the beginning of some experiments where companies are having honest dialogue. They're acknowledging what their own self-interest is. They're asking leaders who are employees what kinds of power they want and trying to figure out ways to give it to them. They're accepting that this is a new domain. They're investing in training leaders. They're initiating some new experiments to give workers power, even sometimes considering remaining neutral to unionization and recognizing this is an opportunity. In fact, Brad Smith just said this, Brad Smith from Microsoft that this is really an opportunity for us to learn and make mistakes together, but that we need to be in a situation where businesses and labor strive to work together well. One group where that's happening is the Aspen Institute has a business roundtable on organized labor where many business leaders are gathering and trying to figure out what this future might look like. And maybe if we were to come together at an event like this in 20 years, a statement like this might be obvious. Today, it's something we probably need to invent. And the good news is, in tech, that's what we do. So thank you.